I'm Scott L. Miller. It's the 2nd of September 2022 and this is my vlog of daily life in Nicaragua and today I am filming in Matagalpa up in the mountain region in the north and uh, I'm actually filming this in the future because today I'm actually in Leon uh, but we will be heading up there in the morning but I want to do as much filming up there as possible because up here because I love it and you guys don't get to see you get to see lots and lots of Leon you get to see very little of Matagalpa and I already I'm just gonna start off spinning this camera around because I love where I am here uh, I can't even tell you exactly what part of the city this is but look up I love Matagalpa because of the mountains and you can see this is all clouds here we've had rain come in but the the heavy rain stopped and now there's just a tiny sprinkle coming down while I'm doing this but I love how much there is um, the the city just goes up the hillside here I love this house too so I'm gonna do a quick you can see at the top of this hill this uh, thing in the way that is the Mirador uh, in case you ever want to see where we are on a map or just understand how high that is why it has such great views this house is absolutely fantastic and uh, this is just houses on the hillside and all through the city it's like this this is not a unique hill in any way and so you get these beautiful clouds that come in uh, all over town you get um, rain pretty often you get these amazing views from high up from down low and it is just fantastic and so I'm gonna walk around Matagalpa and talk a bit and while I do that uh, really I have nothing much to report today it's Friday and uh, worked all day pretty busy all the normal things had to be extra busy today because obviously we are heading to Matagalpa in the morning and I've been talking about that uh, for a week or more because the corn festival is gonna be on it's actually called the corn fair is well it's actually called the Feria de Maze but it's uh, going on um, it's already started actually they had the kickoff but the big stuff is obviously this weekend uh, and this is one of the bigger events in the country believe it or not which is weird that there's so little information online about it so you can't really look up what's going on very easily but it is a really major event uh, because um, the harvest and everything is so important for the highlands region this is where a lot of the grains and stuff come from for the country so the whole country really celebrates this pretty heavily as a tradition and uh, it's it's uh, pretty cool and it's nice that they have big events like that up here Matagalp is actually kind of a an epicenter for the fair circuit it's very uh, very central for a lot of things and a lot of products in the country come from up here so it's it's kind of just a big production center and I love that there's just so much beautiful water coming through the city like it's a it's a really cool spot uh, and just everywhere you look there's so much interesting going on with all the houses up on the hills and all of that so very busy uh, and then Marcella is working at the hotel this weekend so she came in this evening uh, and made it in time to join Ella and Anna and I going out for dinner our plan this evening I am going to I'm trying to decide where I'm going heading off to the left um, my my plan all of our plans for this evening was to go to El Sopan which we love for dinner for me it's it's more of ambiance they have very little for me to eat quality is good service is great uh, but for everybody else it's one of the best steak places in town so they were looking forward to that we tried to go the other night yeah, last night and they were closed so we went tonight and uh, we tried to call ahead. We looked on the website. We looked on Google. Everything said it was open. Our taxi driver's like, no, they're not open. My cousin works there. We're like, what? So we tried to call. We tried to call and could not get a hold of them, which was indicative of them being closed. And when we got up there, yeah, it was really closed. We have no idea why. We have no idea what's going on. That's one of the things that sucks in Nicaragua. Businesses do a very bad job of keeping anything up to date. So you pretty much have to call them and ask if they're open if you want to know ahead of time. If you want any assurance that you're going to be able to go someplace, you have to call ahead. And that's a terrible process because a lot of places don't answer the phone anyway. So you can put in quite a bit of effort trying to uh, reach a place and think that they're closed and then it turns out they just were busy and not answer, uh, partially because they don't use phones down here like we do in the United States. Uh, they use WhatsApp for everything for really sensible reasons, but WhatsApp does not have any accommodation for business communications. It is a personal communications only, and someone will say, but they have business accounts. Yes, they do. No, it does not work for a business. It's still a consumer account. It has no business accommodation with the business account. Uh, I'm going past the restaurant Pescamar in case you want to follow along with where I am. I also want to point out it is raining on me. You can't see it too much, but there's it's coming from behind, so my back is wet and the camera is wet but not the lens. So we're good for the moment, but we're getting wet. That's uh, 
never ideal. At least I have a hat, but I, I try not to get the camera wet because it does not have its waterproof housing on when I record for you guys. I am on the GoPro Hero 9 in case anyone was wondering. And yes, that is a chicken right in front of me in case you didn't see it. And he runs, runs away. Um, uh, so we, we got to Elso Pond and it was closed and we're like, are you serious? So uh, our cab driver's like, no, I can't take you anywhere else. And we're like, what? What are you talking about? That's the city bus there. Uh, so he just dropped us off up on the north side of El Centro. He didn't leave us up by El Sopan, but he only brought us a little bit of the way back. Like, it was really awkward. And, uh, but we all decided we wanted to go a little bit out of breath. These, these are serious hills, in case it wasn't obvious. And uh, so we all decided we wanted to go to uh, El Mediterraneo uh, Terraza, which I've never been to, uh, which kind of works out perfect. Okay, I just want to point out that we saw this last night. Dominic and I walked past this with the girls last night in the future. So tomorrow we will walk past this. There's actually what seems to be a bar up on top of this. It's all lit up at night, but you can't really see it now. So I'm going to cross the street and get a little bit better shots are over here this is an amazing neighborhood i'm about to walk through so i'm, I'm going to try to mix in showing some of this with okay so i don't know how much you can see but there's like a terrace up here and there's all these lights and they light up at night and as far as we can tell it's like a full bar and everything going on and it's the most beautiful spot with these great views and that's like solid rock there right like there's there's no building a house into that uh, so we're not really sure what it is, but it looks really interesting. And this is a hotel directly next to it. Really nice looking. Be really interested. And then this entire street, and this one's for sale right here that we're about to go by. This entire street is the most amazing houses. And some of the best stuff is on the hillsides because they give you just really neat um, kind of views and spots to build and interesting stuff. So you can see these are really tall structures. Uh, I don't know how much is going to come across on the camera, but while that's a three-story house, it feels like four stories tall. It's so dramatic. And I don't want to only get the stuff on that side because this is definitely a multi-million dollar estate that I'm coming by on the right. This is the wall where it starts so you didn't miss anything. And uh, very modern, right in the middle of the city. Even in Nicaragua, this house would cost millions of dollars. This is like half a city block right here. I'm going to get some of this again as well. I don't want you to miss it. This is this is really neat stuff. And this is, we walked past this or will walk past this tomorrow night with the girls. And as we walked past, it was just, we were like, are you seeing this? Do you see how beautiful all of this is? Like, this is just such an expensive, exclusive part of town, but it's right in the middle of town. We are, we're right in town. This is, I'm not on the edge. I'm not out in some weird spot. You can see, like I'm looking towards downtown right there. There's industrial structures right there. And uh, all right, crossing the street. And there's all kinds of stuff up on the hills that I've never been to. But this area especially, and lots of, of Madagalpa in general, gives me a very European feeling, um, obviously with a very Central American flair, but much, much more so than uh, Leon or Granada or Managua. Um, just the, and a lot of it is that much of Europe is built on heavy hills. And so that style, the things that are naturally going to occur that way that don't tend to happen in North America, we don't tend to build towns on this kind of landscape. Um, but Europe does. And so any place that does that has a, a naturally a certain European feel to it for those of us who have been there uh, a bit because that built on a hillside uh style the the necessity of that style uh kind of kind of just becomes a uniform thing it has nothing to be do with being european it has everything to do with building on this type of terrain it's just a, a and what i really really am i think sensing is that it's a european terrain now i want i do want to point out i've not seen these before but look clearly this and this over here those are some seriously gorgeous houses that i'm seeing some distance away who knows how many of those there are here. Lots of affordable housing in Madagalpa. A uh, very affordable city in general, but also really, really off the hook, amazing places nestled all over as well. A good range and, and stuff that you don't find in other cities because um, you're able to do this. I, I want to head up this way. This road doesn't look like too much of a climb. We're doing it. We're just, I don't know where we are. 
This place sells popsicles and gelatins and chocolate covered bananas. That's good. There is always money in the chocolate uh, banana stand. So here we go. Buenas tardes. Buenas tardes. This is just a cool looking street. Um, okay, so we, we got dropped off by the taxi. Remember, I was telling a story. And, and when he dropped us off, we were like, oh, we want to go to Mediterranean. Luckily, he dropped us off really close to there without knowing where we wanted to go. So we didn't have to get another taxi. We were able to just walk. So he was being like grumpy and weird and refused to take us where we wanted to go, but took us there anyway for free because obviously we didn't have to pay when he was being grumpy and just dropped us off somewhere. It was a really weird reaction to the place being closed. Like obviously we were gonna pay him for wherever we were going. I don't know. Anyway, went to Mediterraneo, had a nice dinner. Uh, it was it was not the best, um, not a place that I'm gonna be super excited to go to all the time, but it was nice and certainly I will go back. Got some interesting food, got a lobster pasta dish, which was quite nice and uh, brought food back for the girls. And then once back also ran out to, to Umo to pick up dessert for them too, because they kind of missed out on some meals today because uh, they were sleeping and we were all very busy. So that was Friday, that was the day right uh and uh had to get to bed on the early side tonight because we need to be up relatively early in the morning check this out look at this there are dogs barking at me back there this driveway up to what looks like a really cool house up there this seems like a cool house here probably something cool here but i don't know this looks really cool and then you can tell all of this really neat up here all right Whew. sorry for being out of breath it's only gonna get worse as I head up the hill. But good exercise. Keep in mind, you're keeping me alive by keeping my heart working in these situations. So here I go. I have done so much walking the last few days. I'm getting a lot of exercise. So the topic that I wanted to talk about today is the idea of the changing of perceptions that happens when you move to a new country. And so I first came here to Nicaragua seven years ago. I also came here to Matagalpa seven years ago, almost exactly uh, now, like, like in five weeks, it'll be exactly seven years. And one of the things that we found when we first got here, this was, we had lived in Panama prior to moving to Nicaragua. And, oh, this street looks really interesting too, but I, I can't climb every street on this particular trip. And when we first came here, uh, even having been in Panama previously, because Panama is a very rich country, um, and we, we kind of had a certain amount of preparation for it. But when we um, moved uh, up here, when is there this? There was, as there often is, a pretty heavy amount of culture shock. And we were prepared for the most part. We knew basically what to expect. We knew the drop in average income and all those things. Hello, doggy. And it still hits you pretty hard, I think, uh, coming from most places to a country like Nicaragua. The drop in income is so significant that when you're driving through the countryside, when you're landing at the airport, when you're going out around a city, you're going to feel um, quite a bit of that drop um, in income, right? You, you tend to see the country uh, in, in a very different light than you expect. I'm gonna take a break here on the side so I have some ability to breathe and talk because I don't know if it shows how steep this road is on the video, but it is steep. You can see what kind of drainage they have to handle this. This is hardcore. All right, we're gonna take a quick break before I continue. Yeah, we're pretty high up here. It's, uh, it's pretty extreme, but so interesting. So different than what you get in so much of the rest of Nicaragua. So, yeah, bring you back. Still catching my breath. It's intense. It's an intense walk. I came from way down in the valley up here just during a little bit that we were talking. So when we first got here, like, yes, there's this drop and there are things you're, you're not used to experiencing. You will see shanty towns on the side of the road. You will see all kinds of poverty very, very up close and in person. And even if you are expecting it, 
within reason, it still tends to be a bit of a shock. As we've lived here, two things have happened. One is the economy has just exploded. And the country is literally doing far better than it was seven years ago. And things really have improved in a very physical way. Right, when we, when we travel around the country, a lot of the shanty towns that we used to be so shocked at seeing are gone. Um, and now people are, you know, obviously are not moved into rich housing, but people have moved into houses in many cases, not 100%, but in large numbers. And some of the, some of the worst or saddest parts of societal issues that were going on here have been resolved. And so that's fantastic. And that's, that's just a, an improvement. And that would not change with our perception. But it's also really important, um, and I really hope that those of you who are looking at moving here or just coming to visit uh, see this and, and really understand what I'm trying to say before you do. Um, and that is, oh, I just noticed there's a really cute cat hiding back there. Every dog and cat gets my attention. It's just kind of the way it is. I'm getting ready to head down the hill and I'm going to turn the camera around when I do because it's just, it's so cool. But as we've been here, it's amazing how much because the world approaches housing, approaches restaurants, approaches life so differently uh, from one place to another, a lot of what happens here, and I've been to, I lived in Spain for a while, and um, I visited Africa, North Africa, and especially in North Africa, but in Spain because of the North African influence, something that's really dramatic is that they view homes as something that you, you make the inside beautiful and the outside, you pretty much make it look terrible, not intentionally, but you do very little about it because you want to discourage theft. You want to discourage showing off. You're not trying to be showy. You want a beautiful place to live, but you don't need other people to know you have a beautiful place to live. It's not about showboating. It's simply about having a great aesthetic for you. And in North America and in Northern Europe, um, there tends to be a very strong uh, different culture and that culture is that the outside of your house needs to be really beautiful It needs to make your neighborhood beautiful. You're, you're contributing to the look and feel of your neighborhood The inside can be whatever and so because of that and this is not universal, but there this is a real thing travelers regularly regularly report this effect and that is if you go to let's say Morocco this is a very strong example. You can travel through an old city and say, wow, this is so decayed and so run down. And I just feel so badly for the people who live here. Like, it's so awful. And then you go into one of those houses and you're like, oh my gosh, this is so beautiful. It's so open and airy and just decorated. And yes, it may be old, but in a gorgeous way. And you're so jealous of this house, jealous of a house you felt, you felt pity for standing outside. Right, and it's and it's like what? Am, what? How is this? It, this must be a fluke. But no, that's that's how many, all almost all of the really beautiful houses are like that. Sure, they may look okay, but generally from the outside, you're actually just so close. It's just a wall. It's like a brick wall or a mud wall, whatever, and you have no idea. It's just part of a wall. You're in the middle of walls everywhere, and you go inside, and it's like whoa, and and that culture spread through an area, and um, and and visitors then visit. Northern Europe, and you say, wow, just everywhere I look, everything's so beautiful. The neighborhoods are so gorgeous. I love walking down the sidewalk because it's so amazing. And you walk into a house and you go, meh, that's, it might be nice. It might be fine, right? But you're not like, whoa, so impressed. It's so amazing. I'm so jealous of it. No, you're like, oh, they live in a nice neighborhood, but this place is nothing special. And, and, and it really is, in one, it's all about making the neighborhood look amazing. It's all about this shared external experience. And the other, it's all about this home experience. And you don't have, an, and in many cases, you don't have a neighborhood. And it, and it comes from who knows how many things, right? Weather and um, uh, zoning and how cities are laid out, um, rules about how the outside of your house looks. Any number of things can be huge influences that traditionally have made this happen and are now a cultural thing. These are thousand years ago kind of things. Um, but it's important to, like, just that alone, understanding that Morocco had this profound, uh, influence on Spain, especially southern Spain. And Spain, especially southern Spain, had a profound influence on much of Latin America, especially some of the older places like Nicaragua. And in cities like Leon and Granada, it is so strong that they are, I mean, Granada is called Granada because it's influenced by the city of Granada in the south of Spain, the last city under Moroccan rule, under Moorish rule, and the Alhambra and that, that zone, right? 
Uh, and so when you're there, you get a lot of that same feeling. Wow, this could be Morocco. Yeah, not quite, but it gives you a bit of, I, you see the Moroccan influence for sure. When you're in Leon, it's a little bit less of the North African influence, but you see the Spanish influence, the Spanish colonial. And it's like, wow, these places are all about the inside. And one of the reasons for that, one of the re reasons we know historically is that the, it, you had to air condition houses through architecture. And so the houses had to be designed to be safe and to cool the inside of the house, because Morocco is very hot and Spain is quite warm much of the time. And, and so that architecture had to be that way. And much of Latin America is the same, especially Leon and Granada. They're very hot cities, hotter than Spain for sure, probably hotter than Morocco, at least hotter than most of Morocco. And so they had a tradition to follow and a architectural reason for doing so. And so they are extremely centered on this open, airy, middle, colonial feel that is naturally air conditioned um, by, by, by nature, because they didn't have air conditioners when they built these things, right? And they didn't have electric when they built these things. They had to be designed around this lifestyle. And much of northern countries and the mountain towns like here in, Mar in Madagalpa, I have a bee flying around my face, come on, um, they are uh, built around places that, that often get cold and are not warm. They're not focused solely on how to keep things cool. I'm going to spin it around and walk you guys down the hill. Uh, and because of that, you have this much more closed off internal of a home uh, and the ability to treat the outside differently. You don't have to wall off your home and keep it cool in order to have a, pl a living space that you can manage. You can seal things off and keep things warm in a smaller space and you have a lot of outside space around your home to work with. It, it's a pretty significant change whether heating or cooling is your primary goal and are you before or after air conditioning. And so uh, that has led to this, this dichotomy of architecture between the two influence regions. And here in Nicaragua, we are heavily influenced by the south, by the heat, by the tropics. And because of that, as North Americans, as Western Europeans, typically coming to a country like this, there tends to be this extremely strong reaction that is the same that you have in the Mediterranean world of, wow, the outside of things just isn't that good. Um, of course, some parts of Spain and Italy and, and Greece have really made an effort to make their external spaces look really beautiful as a tourist thing. Um, but naturally, the, there's very little of that. The one exception being how everything gets painted white, which is really beautiful, and that is just to keep out the sunlight, but or to, to, to keep the houses from overheating from the sun. But the the overall aesthetic, the approach to aesthetic, the way the lifestyles work, very very different, um, and and often we react to that. And in time, um, living in in whether it's the Mediterranean world or Africa or here in Latin America, there is um, a natural uh, becoming accustomed to what it looks like, what a nice house looks like, rather than a poor one, um, and understanding that that the way that people live needs to be different. Uh, and so that's one piece. And another piece is um, simply uh, things are different, right? And I don't want to say that there isn't a lot of poverty. There is. And that there aren't a lot of people living in homes that we would not want to live in if we had the choice. There is. And, and that's sad. And those are things that we wish we could change. But there's also this, when we first got here, when anyone I know first gets here, there is a very strong, oh my gosh, it's all terrible. And in reality, once we've lived here for a while and understand what the insides of houses probably look like, when we understand how safe the neighborhoods are, how walkable they are to interesting things, what their weather is like, all kinds of things, suddenly many of the places that we previously pity, we are suddenly jealous of. And, and this happens to people who move anywhere in the world. This is not unique to this region or to this country or anything of the sort, but I do think it is very strong here, especially given the mix of where we are and where most people who are visiting here come from. By the way, this, this empty lot right here, which looks like nothing much, is for sale and could be an absolutely gorgeous dream home location. 
uh, with multiple layers in a really, really cool spot. And, and that's a great example, I think, that um, a lot of you watching this video will look at that and say, Whoa, who would want to live there? Uh, because you can't really tell until you've lived here what kind of community this is, what kind of area this is, what kind of opportunities you have to build a house. And for someone like me who's lived here for a while, that is a really, really wonderful location that could be just amazing because of how awesome the neighbors are, the close access to downtown. When is that this? And uh, uh, just general, general uh, aesthetic of the region. Um, and so that change in perception, that takes a time. It's not gonna happen in three months. It takes a year, it takes two years. Um, of, and it really takes getting in and knowing the, the place. And for me, walking around and going to communities and, and seeing homes, and one of the reasons that I'm so interested in doing a home show in the region is because there are so many beautiful homes and beautiful gardens and beautiful neighborhoods uh, and, and patios and all these things that are fantastic. And I think that just seeing them would make people understand much better what beautiful lifestyles exist and can exist here uh, that are not often perceived even by those who visit firsthand because it's hidden behind old walls or it's put in a setting that we don't understand and we don't have the, the correct context to understand what a beautiful place it is and that sounds weird. Do you need context to understand beauty? And I think the answer is yes, you do. Um, and it's, it, it's an interesting change, I think, that happens when you, you first come and you look, and even like the house that I'm, I'm showing here, which is a very cute house with interesting styling, um, I think a lot of Americans will look at that and say, wow, that looks like something from the 1960s, and it's probably been there for a while, and that, that makes it feel old. And here, old is something that people treasure, and old is something that's going to last because of the way that it's built. And that style is something that is quite expensive, and it means that somebody really put in an effort uh, doing that particular style. I love these, these apricot-colored flowers over here, by the way. And... Um, and so understanding that this is a statement um, and something really, really nice uh, and that, you know, chances are the interior is something gorgeous and, and really, really comfortable um, and it's in such a great neighborhood, all of that is something that when you can put that all together, um, because you have that context, you see these houses in a completely different way. That doesn't mean, of course, that that style is going to be something that you fall in love with personally. That may not be the case. You will often bring your own context to, to what you want to live in, what you want to have, and that's absolutely fine. That's gonna be the case, but it's important to understand the, the context in which the houses that are here, and instead of looking at so many homes and neighborhoods and saying, oh, that's unfortunate, I think in, in, in not too much time, in a year or two, you will tend to come and look at the same neighborhoods with a completely different eye and say, wow, Maybe that's not the style for me. I'm not gonna go build that particular house, but what a beautiful place that is. What an interesting community uh, they have here, and, and I bet that's really a nice place. And suddenly, um, and all of this I find, what a cool street. Love this street. Uh, I think really quickly, um, you find that it's a place that you can understand far better and a place that you can look at and say, wow, there's just, there's just so much amazing opportunity for, for really great living um, in this country, in this region, uh, and in many regions, right, that we, we may write off because we simply don't have the proper context to understand what it is that we are, we are looking at. So that is my, my look at context and, and change in perception of beauty over time uh, because it certainly is true. When I first came to Nicaragua, I fell in love with the country, but I was constantly bombarded with, wow, it's so rough. But I think I can make a difference, and I love the people, and I love the food. And now, coming back, yes, it's improved, but I spend so much time understand everybody's honking at me, understanding that I'm looking at often beautiful homes and, and great lifestyles 
and, and, and completely different things than I originally perceived. And, and some of it is, you know, I now know that I, having lived here, I don't need the same square footage that I needed other places. And so when I look at a, a 500 or an 800 square foot home, I don't go, oh, it's so unfortunate. How could you live in that? I say, you know, if I didn't need a home office, that would be so nice for me. That's all I need. I have two kids. I need a little bit more than that. But if I had, if I only had a need for one extra bedroom, really, some of the tiny two bedrooms um, that I know are absolutely adequate uh, and, and comfy and easy to cool and easy to clean. And because lifestyles are are outside, everybody goes out. You don't spend your time at home. And so the needs for things at home are completely different. And the approach and like you often want a house that's much much easier to maintain because. Hold on. All right, check this out. Because you spend so much less time in your home, all right, when the weather is so consistently nice, when there's so much to go out and do, when everybody is outside hanging out, those are, those are kids playing that you hear screaming in the background. Uh, when you have such a beautiful lifestyle, your need for what you do in your home is likely gonna be different. Of course, some people are gonna move here and they're gonna stay in home and they're gonna treat it much like they would wherever they came from, and that's fine, right? But many people who come here are going to discover that they like a different lifestyle than they had. And, and many times that's the reason that people move to a country like Nicaragua is because you want to have access to a different lifestyle. You want to be able to go to the local bar and hang out with your neighbors and have this beautiful, beautiful, uh, friendly neighborhood experience that you could do in the United States, but it's very hard, right? I lived in Dallas, I lived in a small community. We had one bar and it kind of was like that, but not really. And it was hard to hang out and you never saw the same people twice. And they only had a little bit of food and one beer, right? One type of beer, not just one beer that everybody shared, but, and, and here there's every neighborhood is full of local bars and it's full of the same people night after night. And everybody goes, and you know, they're not getting wasted. It's not some big, you know, drunken brawl. It's just everyone's having a beer and seeing what's going on in the neighborhood and hanging out and being social. And that lifestyle is so nice. Lots of people will want to come here for that. And, and that's just something it takes time to adjust to, but that changes what you're going to want in a house. It changes what you want in a lot of things. And, uh, and of course the pricing here changes what's available to you. So we'll do some, we'll do some episodes on how big of a house you really want and some stuff like that. But I really, I really had this like need to talk about this too, because it affected me so much in time um, and coming back here, my memories of Madagalpa and now being in Madagalpa, you know, I remember it as a town that I loved I've, and I've been about, you know, three times in the past year, but I haven't spent as much time as I have this weekend. Uh, and I haven't done nearly as much walking around. And now that I'm here walking around and really exploring and really getting a lot of chance um, to see many neighborhoods, it's just, wow, blows me away what a beautiful city it is, how many places um, in the city I'm jealous of, right? I'm jealous of, of, there's 20 houses that I'm looking at right here. Hola. <laughs> they are all turning around looking at me, so they get to be on camera. Oh, just the same, I saw that puppy earlier. I saw, I saw this puppy at the fair earlier many blocks away <laughs> all right sorry for spinning the camera so much um and suddenly i'm so jealous of so many places here there's so many houses that i see that i just know would be amazing and it's like wow that's that's a place that I, wow right um and i didn't have that feeling before before when i was in madagalpa i very much had a feeling of this is a great city i could i could live here without a question and now i i'm just i can't believe the number of places that i find that are absolutely fantastic um, and just, just from walking by, this is without being able to go in and seeing all the amazing interiors with nothing on the outside so that you, you can't tell. Anyway, I wanna know your experiences about this. I wanna know your questions about this. Uh, like and subscribe. Lots of questions about Madagalpa. I'm gonna be here for the next few days. So there's gonna be a number of episodes filmed here. I hope, I'm, I'm hoping four, um, minimum of two. And uh, yeah, I will see all of you from Madagalpa tomorrow.